This is future me coming to give some insight on the video and explain some of the process that's going to unfold. I'll provide a timestamp to skip the preamble and explanation of Fallout 3's road situation and map situation and get straight to the roads that lead out of the map. That's the whole point of the video, of course. But as the video continues, I am going to label the roads in game with what I think their real life counterparts are. Anyway, to the video. I'm curious, how many of you at some point in your childhood have found yourself standing at the edge of the limits of a video game, looking out into the distance at what the developers placed just beyond your reach and wondered what's out there, what's just beyond what I can play. There's something so mysterious and alluring about this in a lot of game series, and I think Fallout is one of those in particular. I think one of the main reasons for this is that the series takes place in alternate versions of real US cities. This means much of the map, locations, geography, and of course, the roads match or come close to the real world counterparts. If we look at New Vegas quickly, many players will know of Interstate 15, often referred to as the Long 15, and of course the various other roads leading out of Vegas. Feel free to check out my other video on the New Vegas roads if you're interested, but for now I just want you to notice something. Take a look at the yellow major roadways displayed on the map of Las Vegas here. Now let's take a look at DC and Fallout 3's situation. That's at least 7,000 more yellow brick roads in the nation's capital. For the Fallout New Vegas video, mapping things out was a cakewalk. Half the roads are even labeled in-game, with road signs that are left from the pre-war, and they match the real-life counterparts. All you have to do is follow the real-life map, and you'll see exactly what lies beyond the borders of New Vegas' game world. Fallout 3 is not like this at all. First of all, Fallout 3 does not label major interstates or large roadways, leaving the map as far as I can tell. Every single road sign for directions that I have seen has looked the same, beat up and worn away, showing no words. There are remnants of road signs within the city of DC, but Bethesda perhaps intentionally made it so every major roadway in Fallout 3 that leaves the map is a mystery. Fallout 3 also has a different situation than New Vegas in that many of the locations don't exactly mimic the real life areas. New Vegas has a ton of exact naming and locations within its map. Of course, the Strip, but also Good Springs, Prim, Red Rock Canyon, Bonnie Springs, Spring Mountain Ranch State Park, Mount Charleston, part of Freeside is Fremont Street or Old Vegas, Searchlight, Boulder City, Nellis Air Force Base, Hoover Dam, Lake Mead and Lake Las Vegas, even Fortification Hill. There are many more examples. Fallout 3 is not exactly like this. While within the dense urban DC area, we will see exact naming. Fallout 3 takes an approach where the wasteland is much more warped after the Great War. This can make it difficult to tell what areas in game are exactly what in real life, even when they do share similar names. At times I thought perhaps the map was oriented in a different direction making things confusing, but let's look at this example here where we have Fairfax and Annandale. In Fallout 3 we have two locations seemingly matching these spots with the Fairfax ruins and Andale. Notice in real life this area is known as Annandale, so it's not an exact carryover. Fairfax is maintained, but Annandale becomes Andale. So we have the names pretty close here, but let's look at our maps. In real life, Fairfax is west if a bit northwest of Annandale. In Fallout 3, the map markers are vertically stacked, so Fairfax ruins are just directly north of Andale. However, if we go north up here and look at the Bethesda ruins, which is a real location, and look where that is relative to Old Olney, which is another real location simply known as Olney, they match almost perfectly. You'll notice this consistent inconsistency that occurs with Bethesda's roads and locations where at times it seems like it is directly mimicking it, similar to how New Vegas might of its areas, although to scale a bit, and then other times it takes incredible reaches in creative liberty and pulling locations from far out and away, and also altering how the real world looks. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing, I actually find it really interesting and captivating and we can simply explain this as part of this area just being so severely warped and it's also an alternate universe so things can be different as is. But this world, or this area of the world, was pummeled with nuclear explosions so perhaps things did get moved around a bit. Maybe Andale got a couple letters knocked off and was moved south of Fairfax. Because of this, we're gonna have to do a lot of relative guessing on these locations and try and line things up as logically as possible because Fallout 3's map is not evenly scaled and it's not an exact version of DC in the surrounding area. For example, we can see Evergreen Mills to the west of the downtown area, which in real life also sits just outside the urban sprawl. 
However, when we come up to Raven Rock in Fallout 3's map, which looks like it's only just a bit west of Evergreen Mills and also far north in the game, in reality, the Raven Rock Mountain Complex is just across the southern border of Pennsylvania. We can see how this does kind of line up with Germantown in real life and where Raven Rock is, along with the Germantown Police Station and Raven Rock in Fallout 3. This potentially means that Fallout 3 takes place in three different states, being Virginia, Maryland, and then Pennsylvania, not to mention the District of Columbia, of course. But now, after all that setup, we can finally get to those roadways. There are also a lot of strange situations going on with Fallout 3's roads as displayed on the map and as shown in game. I mean, there are situations where there are roads shown on the map, but then when you go there in game, there's no road leading out of that section. And there are also situations where there's no road shown on the map, but when you go to that location there is a very clear road leading out of the map and throughout that part of the map as well. In particular, when we go down to the Rockland car tunnel, you can see an entire road with cars going into a tunnel that's leaving Fallout 3's playable area. This must be because this was a DLC added location though. Finally, some of the roads leading out of the area are not roads at all, they're high speed rail lines from the alternate futuristic timeline of Fallout. I'll still treat these as roads, just as they might be another common form of travel in this futuristic society where the US has figured out public transportation a little better, I guess until they ran out of resources. Okay, so we're gonna start in the bottom right corner of the map and then work our way around. This area is pretty speculative because it's difficult to line up with a real life map and the in-game space gives us little to work with as it's in ruins. My guess is this is probably Sickard Street Southeast as Rivet City likely sits in the Anacostia River near the Naval Sea Systems Command. This lines up with the map quite cleanly. Sickard Street can lead us over to Interstate 695, and this is where we can start to bring the world Fallout 3 established in a more connected perspective. Following 695 takes us right into I-295, with another quick adjustment over to the Suitland Parkway, which takes us to the Andrews Air Force Base. Andrews Air Force Base is the real-life counterpart to the Adams Air Force Base featured in the Broken Steel DLC, which acts as the major stronghold for the Enclave. We take the metro there in-game, but we don't actually know where it is on the map. We can see here it sits just beyond the playable borders. Adams Air Force Base is also where Eddie from New Vegas was created, and where the Brotherhood of Seal airship, the Pridwin, was created. You'll notice a line just east of the Jefferson Memorial in the same corner of the map that appears to be a road leading south. In game, it just leads to a parking lot, but there is a lot of destruction in the area and perhaps bridges and such missing. We can also see it looks like much of the land the Jefferson Memorial was on, being East Potomac Park, has been swept away in the river, perhaps being terribly leveled in the Great War. Looks like that led to the National War College, or perhaps at scale and with some squinting, that is South Capitol Street leading to I-295 and the Suitland Parkway as well. If we follow the roads just beyond the Air Force Base, we can see that this isn't the only DLC location that sits just beyond the game's borders. Of course, a good bit further away, but only about an hour and a half drive away from the game's borders, we have Point Lookout and the swamps of the Chesapeake Bay. It's pretty interesting that we can already see two of Fallout 3's DLC locations can be found via the roads in the southeast corner of the map, so if you're ever here in game, you can consider this for reference. Looking eastward out of the map here sits the Enclave controlled Adams Air Force Base, and beyond that is the swamps of Point Lookout. Of course, it's just a pipe dream, but it would be amazing to see the game recreated as one large contiguous world space that connects the DLC spaces to the base game in a remake. The only other location that would need to be bridged, no pun intended, is Pittsburgh, the city of bridges. We'll get there later though. Let's move on to the next roadway just north of the DC ruins, exiting the map by the Rock Creek Caverns and the Corvega Factory. First, let's take a look at this double line here, which in game we can see is one of those high speed rail lines. I believe this to be Fallout's version of 495. Let's look at our maps here. We can see Tacoma Park, Chevy Chase, Friendship Heights, all in game and real life. Even more directly, we can see 495 comes directly through Bethesda and North Bethesda on our real map, then on Fallout 3's map, we can see the double lines come just through a bit north of where Bethesda is marked. In Fallout at least, it seems this interstate was replaced with a high-speed rail line, pretty neat. 
Taking a look at this next road coming through diagonally seeming to be just about intersecting with I-495 as the map fades to the edges, I believe this road roughly represents Colesville Road turning into the Columbia Pike 29. 495 leads directly back to the Andrews Air Force Base, but both of these roads also lead us right into another enormous city being Baltimore. For those who do not know, feast your eyes on this real life map again and realize how close Washington DC and Baltimore, Maryland are. They are essentially connected and furthermore, a part of this developing megalopolis of the US's east coast consisting of DC, Baltimore, Philly, New York City, and more. Shrinking back down to just these two though, it's so fascinating to consider how little we know about Baltimore in the Fallout universe despite it sitting right beyond Fallout 3's borders this whole time. It's even in between Fallout 3's DC and Fallout 4's Boston. We know just about nothing worth mentioning in relevance to Fallout when it comes to DC's sister city, Baltimore. Would love to see Fallout's take on Baltimore and what remains, but given we were so close in DC, I would be surprised to see a return. Who knows, maybe we get an expansion in the next East Coast game for it. Moving on, we're going to go to the northeast corner of the map near Old Olney. As I said, a real location, but it's simply known as Olney. Not exactly sure why it's called Old now. Maybe it's because it's full of death claws, so people differentiate its current state to the previous one by calling it Old. Often it seems Fallout locations get new put in front of them. New Vegas, New Reno, etc. Olney is home to a large underground government facility known as the Olney Support Center in real life. So as we look at our map here, we can see we have two branching roads, one thicker road headed north-northwest of Olney, and another little wormy guy over here going northeast. I believe the larger road here to be Route 97, which leads us north to the town of Westminster, and then to Route 140. 140 either takes us back down to Baltimore, or towards the southern border of PA. Some of you might be thinking maybe Route 108 is actually the thicker road, and Olney is oriented differently in game, but again, as I mentioned earlier, Olney is situated almost exactly where it should be relative to DC and Bethesda. These locations do mimic real life quite accurately in regard to their placement, so when we look at the real map, it would not make sense for 108 to be the central road leading straight through town. We can see that 185 and 97 merge coming from the DC area north towards Olney, and Route 97 lines up perfectly with our thicker in-game road. Now looking at the squiggly little offshoot on Fallout 3's map, then zooming into northern Olney on our real map, Right along the northeastern border of town, we can see Goldmine Road, which carries in the same direction as the in-game road, taking us to Route 650, which if we follow south, we will end up back in Tacoma Park and the DC area. If we follow it north, it leads us to a large body of water known as Triadelphia Reservoir. Furthermore, into the small town of Damascus, which is just north of Germantown. We see at least a portion of what remains of Germantown in game at their police station. Many of these roads just end up leading to more and more roads, that's how roads are intended to work, but thinking back to the New Vegas breakdown, this area is just so much more interconnected and traversable in regard to the abundance of roadways. You would think the east coast at this point would be able to make great use out of what remains of those roads to track down and link up with different settlements. It's just strange because the west seems like it's rebuilding with two roads across hundreds of miles, while the east has 200 roads within two miles and everything is still in disarray. Anyway, that's old Olney and its roads, Goldmine Road and Route 97. Now we can move to the middle north section of the map where two more roads lead out of the map in between Oasis and the generically named Radio Tower. It's the only one. So we have some more inconsistencies to discuss. Take notice where the Germantown police station is on Fallout 3's map here, and again back up here at Olney. Now when we look at the real world map, we can see that if anything Germantown is northwest of Olney, not well below it, basically in between Olney and DC as Fallout 3 displays it. We can see the Montgomery County Reservoir here in Fallout 3, and we can also see the Montgomery Village right here east of Germantown in real life. I believe these are the parallel roads of I-270 and Route 355, which lead north out of Germantown through Ten Mile Creek and eventually to Interstate 70 in the town of Frederick. This is relevant because I-70 is going to lead us northwest into Pennsylvania, and this time it will carry us almost all the way to Pittsburgh, or in Fallout, this is the way to the pit. You would likely change to I-79 in Washington, PA, and then head north to the pit. I-70 continues on through the cities of Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indiana, St. Louis, Missouri, and Kansas City on the border of Missouri and Kansas, Denver, Colorado, and then guess what? You run into the I-15, which takes you right down to New Vegas. 
Tale of Two Wastelands complete. There is no way I would have guessed that the roads that lead directly out of the middle north of the map would quickly lead to one of the major interstates that crosses the entire US, let alone the one that goes from the pit to right around where Zion with Joshua Graham is, and then New Vegas. Now we'll head over to the northwestern corner of the map right next to Raven Rock, which again is potentially supposed to be across the southern border of PA. You can see this location is known as Metabank, but the address here reveals the more important details, Raven Rock Mountain Complex. Now this one is a bit difficult because in-game the road near Raven Rock is, well, right near Raven Rock. It also seems to just end at Raven Rock, but you could also argue the earth is so leveled in the direction the road continues through that it was completely upended in this area, perhaps starting again long in the distance. Maybe the Enclave leveled it to limit access to their base as well. Given this particular section seems particularly warped and stretched to fit the game's needs and size constraints, I think it's okay to assume that Route 15 is the road leading past Raven Rock here. Here is my reasoning, let's see if I can convince you of this. Take a look at the Potomac River here, and notice Route 15 is west of Evergreen Mills, continues through Leesburg, and does not cross the Potomac until just the very northern corner at a location known as the Point of Rocks. Sure sounds like a good description of Raven Rock. If we just wildly adjust the position Raven Rock truly draws from, and move it to this location at the Point of Rocks, it almost fits the map perfectly, aside from the fact that Raven Rock in-game is on the other side of the Potomac. And on Fallout 3's map here, we can see this road continues past Raven Rock and goes until the edge of the map, where it begins to fade just behind one of these grid lines conveniently. I want to give Bethesda credit with how mysterious and strange this game feels at times. It starts to seem less and less of an accident, adding to the overall mystique the game carries. Portions of roads that don't exist post-war are still displayed on the map like this instance, while roads that do exist post and pre-war, like this one in the bottom left hand corner of the map, are entirely unmarked. Sure, the location is here on the map, but there's no road displayed, but the road is right here, you can walk on it, and we also see a road next to the Dunwich building. Maybe that has something to do with our missing road. Anyway, Route 15 takes us past Gettysburg and right into the Pennsylvania state capital of Harrisburg, which I doubt Fallout will ever visit. Despite being the capital, most people are much more familiar with the larger cities of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, which are significantly larger. This is especially true of Philadelphia, which is much larger than even DC and Boston as well, but perhaps too similar to those cities to have it be the location of the next one or two entries at least. I'm sure many fans would prefer the next Northeast set game to be in New York City anyway. Okay, so back to our roads. We can see we have one that leads us right out of the map just north of Shale Bridge. We have to figure out where we are here. I don't know of a shale bridge in DC, but there is a shale ridge right here. Again, this is a little off from what we have in game. Shale Bridge is just northwest of Evergreen Mills, but in real life it seems to be northeast of it. Regardless, let's use these two locations along with the Potomac River to fine tune our road selection. Our in-game road crosses the Potomac River, but there are no bridges as far as I can see near this stretch of the P-Boy. We do have one that runs pretty parallel with it right here, and it is also just north of Shale Ridge slash Bridge and Evergreen Mills. So it's either Route 7 or 267, perhaps it's a combination of the two for in-game streamlining purposes because they merge into just 7, and then this road continues out of Leesburg into Winchester, Virginia, and then into Route 50. Route 50 is actually going to take us to Country Roads, right into Grafton, West Virginia. It's pretty interesting to know this road in Fallout 3 that goes directly by Shale Bridge takes us to the setting used three Fallout games later. Also kind of interesting for you map nerds, we can see that this road goes back through this strange section of Maryland that creeps into West Virginia right before arriving in Grafton. Moving on, we have another road just south that passes by Vault 87 and Little Lamplight. This is another section that seems to end at Vault 87, but the map appears to show the fading continuation of the road line beyond the border. I'll make an effort for these regardless because it could be another case of massive destruction to the landscape, which does appear to be the case here potentially. Somehow, we have to get between Evergreen Mills and Shale Bridge, which appears differently in game versus real life. I am also limiting my choices of other roads, which I believe are linked to the upcoming locations, so this is forced into being likely the smallest back road we have covered. I think this is Harmony Church Road, noted here as 704, which eventually takes us to the small town of Hamilton and Route 7 once again. 
This is of course just speculation, but perhaps Little Lamplight was placed near Little Washington. We can see it's pretty close to how Little Lamplight is situated relative to Evergreen Mills. Goodall Emile says that Little Lamplight is loosely based on Luray Caverns in Virginia, which ruins my entire video. I know he said loosely, but on the other side of the Shenandoah, Fallout 3's map is insane in a very interesting way if that's the case. However, now you can see why Raven Rock being up here and the Metabank marker actually makes sense if that were the case. The world is very warped in order to pull from interesting nearby locations, which I think is pretty cool and leaves a lot of the map up to speculation. So my read on it is that Lurie Caverns is essentially moved to where Little Washington is in real life for the purpose of the game and this is Harmony Church Road 704. When we go here in game as well, it looks like a pretty small back road, but it's worth mentioning that it has a 125 mile per hour speed limit. We're starting to wind down to the last section of roads as we complete the loop around the exterior of the map. This is a major road that leads right by Girdershade as it exits the map. More importantly, notice how it stems from the Fairfax ruins. We can see Route 50 comes straight from Fairfax and south of Evergreen Mills on the real map. As we discussed earlier, this goes to Grafton and Fallout 76's locations, but Route 50 is longer than I originally stated. This would take you to Cincinnati, Ohio, St. Louis, Missouri, and Kansas City, just like I-70, but where I-70 takes you to New Vegas, Route 50 will actually take you past New Reno from Fallout 2, ending up in Sacramento, with San Francisco just beyond. I believe from what we know, San Francisco is the most likely setting for Fallout 5. Wrapping up the east side of the map, we return to the unmarked mysterious road that leads to the Rockland car tunnel, which is filled with rocks, but also serves as the route to the Enclave satellite relay station, which is just on the other side of the tunnel. So we have a bit further to go until we just meet another rock-filled tunnel. This appears to be a major roadway and is situated similarly to Interstate 66, Let's look at the map some more. Now, Tenpenny Tower is not a real life location. However, similarly west of Fairfax and Annandale, we have a series of very, very expensive estate neighborhoods just north of Haymarket and Gainesville. 66 will eventually lead you to 81, which if taken south, will lead you right into Knoxville, Tennessee and the Great Smoky Mountains. Probably a lot of Yawai out this way, the Smoky Mountains sound like a great place to take Fallout to as well. Just next to Tenpenny Tower, we have a road that trails off into the distance going south. Going off the idea that Tenpenny Tower represents this incredibly wealthy section of the greater DC area, it would appear this road could likely be Route 15. It is admittedly very unclear though. Route 15 would eventually lead us to the city of Durham, North Carolina, which is just outside of the state's capital of Raleigh. 15 seems to continue on to Walterboro, a small town just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Finally, we come to the last three or so roads, all of which stem south out of DC. We begin with this one between the Nuka Cola plant and the flooded metro. This is cryptic, as you can see there seems to be a road aligned with this, but then it just disappears. It looks as if no road was ever here, but the map certainly seems to say otherwise, as it's connected to a road that aligns with what the map shows. If we look at our maps again here, take note of where the Jefferson Memorial is, and we can see there are three very similarly aligned roads leading south just out of bounds. Our leftmost would appear to be 395, despite it apparently being eviscerated in Fallout 3. Again on the game map, not really there in game. 395 does look much larger in real life than what's on Fallout 3's map, but they align with the apparent mimicking done on Fallout 3's map with these three roads leading south of DC. Interstate 395 turns into I-95 and takes us to the city of Richmond, Virginia, its capital. Not only to Richmond though, 95 also takes us all the way to Florida, passing directly through Jacksonville. It also passes through St. Augustine, which is one of the oldest towns established in the United States, and it also passes by Orlando, Florida, and takes us right into Miami. I recall there was a fan project making a mod for Fallout 4 called Fallout Miami. I'm not sure of its current state, but taking Fallout to Florida is something we must see before this series turns to dust. Amusement parks in Orlando, cities like Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, and Miami, along with the Everglades, there's so much that Fallout could get creative with in the Sunshine State. Also, interestingly, there would be expansion opportunity in places just off the coast like the Bahamas or Cuba. Currently, we know very little or next to nothing about Florida. Then this middle road here would be Route 1, seemingly or Richmond Highway going through Crystal City, which is just beyond the game's borders. It's also interesting that Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport is right outside the game's borders as well. I wanted to note earlier, it also appears that Washington Dulles International Airport was completely eradicated in the Fallout universe as this large airport sits between DC and the western locations of the map. 
so no airports for us. Route 1 continues through Alexandria, which oddly enough Fallout 3 has a location named Alexandria Arms near this road, but within the borders of the map. This is certainly not supposed to be Alexandria, as the Arlington Library is south of this location, whereas we can see neither Arlington nor its libraries are south of Alexandria in reality. It seems to me that these are the same series of roads in game and real life that go from DC to the south of the United States, starting west of the Potomac River. And that largely completes the greater tour of the roads that leave the capital wasteland, but I want to go over some more iffy or blurry situations around the map. We can see in the downtown area in the bottom right hand corner of the map, that there are many roads leading out to the right. We don't actually get the entirety of DC in Fallout 3, and the game doesn't hide this from you. There are large distant buildings surrounding the outer game world in this area to give you the illusion that the city continues on as it should. We can see this by comparing the maps that those roads represent these sets of streets running through DC. Here is Seward for you which aligns in game and real life, and then Tacoma Park which appears much closer in game, but it's still similar. Nonetheless, this gives us an idea as to what our cutoff point is in DC in Fallout 3. Just beyond the playable space seems to be Lincoln Park, the DC Armory, and even cooler, the US National Arboretum for agricultural research. This would have been an awesome Vault 22 type location potentially for Fallout 3. We also have this weird road situation down near Andale or Annandale. On Fallout 3's map, it looks like a random loop, Perhaps a neighborhood was down here. It's a bit blurred and strange looking on the map, so maybe this is I-495, which passes by Annandale and is west of I-395, which I marked this road as in Fallout 3. The funny thing is neither of them really exist in the game world, and only one of them is clearly on Fallout 3's map, so this is major speculation. Bethesda took a lot of creative liberties with the region, and while there are a lot of locational references, they cleverly name many locations as specific spots rather than full towns. It's not Arlington, it's the Arlington Library, which could have been one of many. And you also have the Germantown Police Headquarters instead of just calling it Germantown. Canterbury Commons is here in game, but Canterbury Common is all the way out in Annapolis in real life. They line up perfectly at times it seems, but then wildly pull from locations way outside of the DC area when they want to. I'm definitely not complaining though, I had fun with this. It made the process challenging and enjoyable. I spent a lot of time looking at maps though, so if you want to do some research yourself and disagree with what I found, feel free. Definitely speak up if you're a native to the area and can offer insight. I'm not. All this work was done using virtual resources. I've only been to DC one time. Anyways, thanks for watching and let me know if there are any other maps and games you'd like covered.